Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here in Rockport, Texas. Yes, I'm at the beach. And we're gonna have beach wine today. So, um, so I've been down here doing my studying, uh, reading all about Bordeaux and uh, getting my flashcards and all that. Just getting ready for the certified SOM test, which probably I won't be taking until September or October, but I really got behind on my studying. So I really wanted to hunker down on this stuff. So uh, came down here, it's relative isolation really. Uh, the internet connection at, at the place I'm staying at, the condo, is non-existent. Well, we don't actually have an internet connection in the condo itself. Uh, there is a Wi-Fi uh, access in the complex, but uh, you got to go outside the condo to, to access it. And uh, cell service is pretty, pretty spotty in the condo. So uh, I'm relatively isolated, so I'm not going to sit there at the computer for two hours and be like, oh, I've been at the computer for two hours. So. I got the seagulls going, all that good stuff. So I decided, why not do a beach episode? Now I did the wines and wasps, you know, and that was at the condo, but let's go to the beach. So we're gonna do wines that you might find at the beach. Now you have to be very careful because when you go to the beach, you can't bring glass. So you got plastic cups and you got box wine, all right? So I went to Walmart this is pretty much the only place besides HEB to go. I mean, I probably could have gone to the local liquor stores and looked for box wine there, but I wanted to, you know, see what they had. And so uh, I got three different box wines. Now you can kind of see what I got over here. Uh, the first one here is uh, I got two two wines from the same company uh, because they're in these Tetra packs. Now these are uh, 500 milliliter. They conveniently tell you it's three plus glasses of wine because it's depending on how you pour your wine it's, it's around three glasses maybe a little more than three glasses um, but uh, it's a 500 milliliter so uh, and it's in what's called a tetra pack um, so this is perfect to bring to the beach you don't have any glass um, it you know I've had this in the refrigerator for a couple days so they're still relatively cool they haven't warmed up too much so they're gonna be at the I guess proper temperature now this is uh, the Vendange, the Vendange. I don't, it's a French word, it's supposed to mean great harvest. Um, they're out of California and they make wines, not just Tetra Pak wines, they make regular like wines in a bottle. So um, anyway, they are out of California. This is a California appellation. So the grapes can come from anywhere in California. Um, Pinot Grigio. And uh, they only had two wines in the in the in the Tetra Pak available. This one and the Chardonnay. So I got these two. Uh, two dollars ninety seven cents at Walmart. Walmart loves that ninety seven cent thing. And uh, so we got that um, Pinot Grigio. I was out to dinner with some uh, with the neighbors downstairs, um, and we were talking about wine and. I said something about Pinot Grigio, and because um, they said they were drinking a lot of Pinot Grigio for a while, and then they discovered Sauvignon Blanc. And I actually thought one of these was Sauvignon Blanc, so I'm a little disappointed that it wasn't. I thought I had a Pinot and a Sauvignon Blanc instead of a Pinot and a Chardonnay. But anyway, uh, talk was telling them about how uh, I, I know somebody that uh, called Pinot Grigio the Coors Light of wine, tastes like nothing. So um, anyway, so we're gonna try it out now. I know plastic cups. I mean, come on, guys. We're at the beach. We're not. This is not serious. Um, we're having a little fun here. So, if you if you've already rolled your eyes a billion times because I've got plastic cups, well, get over it because it's the only thing you can bring to the beach. You can't have any glass. Um, so, and besides, three dollar wine. It's not like we're we're drinking Chateau Neuf de Pop. Uh, we're not drinking uh, Chateau Margaux. Uh, we're not drinking. You know high-end wine here. This is wine you, you want to bring to the beach, right? 
So instead of like beer uh, in a can, uh, or trying to get those mixed cocktails, concoctions, you know, into your whatever container. If you want some wine, you got some wine. So let's check it out. Pinot Grigio, all right. Um, thankfully, I don't really smell plastic, so that's good that the plastic cup isn't imparting too much on it. Um, really just basic, uh, you get some citrus, notes to it, uh, you know, more of a lemon than lime. I'll move the microphone just a little bit because I can tell I'm, I'm touching it when I do that, so. I want to get that nose really in there. I just hope Seagull doesn't like, you know, leave me a present or something. So yeah, really just kind of a lemon mostly citrus lemon um i do seem like to get like a hint of some tropical fruit almost like orange out of it it's not really a tropical fruit right anyway it feels like there's a bit of orange to it so still citrus just not you know that lemon lime we kind of extend into the orange aspect maybe even tangerine so not bad The first one's really just kind of washed the mouth out. Brushed my teeth a couple hours ago. I forgot to rinse out with water earlier, so now this really tastes. Besides, like Kevin Israeli told us all, you know, that first sip of wine really is just kind of a shock to the system. So it's kind of hard to evaluate wine on the very first sip, right? So we're gonna try it again. You know what, for $3, equivalent of a, basically a $5 bottle of wine, it's not bad. High acidity. It's really hitting me now, the acidity. Um, but the, the flavors, the very citrusy flavors are still coming through. Um, I don't think I would confuse this with a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, it's not as... <coughs> it's not as crisp. It's more round in the mouthfeel. Um, now I have no idea really about this company. They they produce wine. There's nothing to there's nothing on the site about their two want that these two well I can't see the the Tetra Pak versions because you have to have flash and I was using the iPhone to look it up. So, um, but when I looked at their bottled versions, which I'm sure is the exact same wine, there's no notes other than like they kind of talk about some tasting notes and that's it. They don't really talk about where the grapes grapes come from. They don't talk about is it oaked, is it unoaked, you know, how long, all that stuff. They don't, they don't give you all the vinification uh, stats, right? So, um, you know, it's got a, still got that lemony thing, but it's, it's, it's rounder, so it feels like it might have been, maybe there's some uh, uh, oak influence on it to kind of soften it. Um, it's not bad. Now the acid seems to have calmed down a little bit. Again, the acid really comes pretty late. It's not initially, but it's definitely not as acidic now in that third sip. So the mouth is mouth is kind of not getting shocked so much with the wine. Um, you know what, for $3, almost a bottle of wine in this thing, you know what, you're not gonna go wrong with it. I'm not, as, as we know, I don't give scores anymore. Um, what I recommend this as um, an everyday drinking wine at your house, yeah, why not? You know, whether you want to come to the beach, you want to drink at the house, you're looking for something inexpensive. I don't like to use the word cheap because that, a lot of people think cheap uh, equates to uh, quality rather than just price. Um, inexpensive, um, is, it, is it something that I would, I'm bowled over by? No, but you know, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's a wine that you're gonna, you're gonna spend a few dollars on, something especially you want to bring to the beach uh, you can reseal it easily. You're not you're not worried about um, uh, putting a cork back in there or anything like that. Um, you know, it's a screw cap, effectively. But you know, again, there's no glass involved. Uh, and also with Tetra Packs, um, 
they tend to last they last really long um, it's still you still broke the seal but you're but with this you are resealing it we're going to get to the black box here in a second because those those are wines that last i don't say forever but in in wine in wine years they last forever once you quote open them um but you know it's not bad it's not bad three dollars i mean it's basic you know i'm not like i said i'm not going to give it an overwhelming recommendation but for what for, for our purposes for today it works so it's reasonable you want some wine go for it all right no vintage on these things by the way all right next wine how you guys been doing man i haven't really done a review in months i love the fact i get to do a review again um i've had an awesome time talking to all these people doing interviews um uh going out of town to to visit people um i mean everybody has just been phenomenal they really have been they've been they've been super nice hospitable i can't say enough good things about everybody up in the texas wineries up in the fredericksburg area uh the monterigos over at messina hoff bill elsie up there in austin um everybody and, and max's wine dive of course you know i'm there all the time but you know this to to sit down with them for a little bit i mean they've everybody's been awesome i want to just thank everybody uh for all the hospitality and 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 uh taking time with me because these things take a couple hours you know uh i mean the, the the episodes alone took about an hour each but then there's another hour maybe an hour and a half prior to that and then sometimes you spend a little time afterwards chit-chatting so i mean it could be a two to three hour experience with these people so you know they're taking that time out of their day to really uh to, to sit down with me so i really appreciate the time that there's that they're taking it's almost half a day for them um anyway so let's move on. We're on the Chardonnay. Uh, again, $2.97 at Walmart. Uh, I'm sure you can find it for a similar price elsewhere. Uh, and I also don't know, I mean, this, this brand might be one of those brands that Walmart's kind of got an exclusive with. Um, uh, maybe with the Tetra Packs they do. I, I don't know, but it does have a where to buy section on the, on the website. So I'm sure Walmart is one of them. I actually want to say I've seen them at Walgreens. So, I mean, again, we're not... I mean, you might find it at your better wine shops in that section that nobody goes to. But um, anyway, and guys, if you're at this place, I, I'm not trying to disparage the wine. You know, it is a $3, you know, 500 milliliter bottle of wine. So, I mean, it's not like you're charging me 20 bucks for it. Okay. Um, anyway, so Chardonnay. Again, it's California. Anywhere from California, I don't know where they get all the grapes from, but it could be from anywhere. Um, it's just that they don't have enough from one AVA specifically to do it. Plus, it is non-vintage, so um, at least I think it's non-vintage. I didn't see one on here. Oh, this is Australia. Oh, well. So they imported the stuff from Australia. I'm glad I looked again, because I'm sure all the vintage people are like, dude, dude, it's Australia, not California. Come on, man. Idiot. <clears throat> Anyway, um, so this is from Australia. See if it says anything else about it. No. Oh, let's see what they're on, on the back. See what their their tasting notes said. Lime and grapefruit. I can kind of see that. Melon, maybe. No, I didn't see the pear. But that's okay. All right, so let's try the Chardonnay from Australia. Again, anywhere in Australia they could have come from. Well, the nose is, it's not much going on in the nose. I guess I get a bit of apple to it. And it could be the plastic cup, but I feel like I'm getting a, um, a processed type of chemical smell. But I think that's the plastic cup I'm smelling, not anything else, so... Again, not, we're not the most ideal situation here, but but I guess I get an, an apple-y type of aroma to it. So let's check out the taste. Mm -hmm. 
loads of apple and a, and a butteriness to it. You know, this is, if I didn't know, if I didn't say Australian, I would guess it was California Chardonnay. Um, definitely New World. Absolutely would be a New World Chardonnay. Nobody would mistake it. Um, but you get, you get that little creaminess to it. You're getting the apple to it. Um, and there's also kind of a, there's a sweetness to it. It's not residual sugar, but you get that, you know, there's, there's a fruitiness to it that people will confuse with sweet wine when, in fact, the wine's dry um, as far as how much sugar content's in it. Um, honey. It's kind of a honey, honey uh, <clears throat> feeling, honey uh, flavor to it. You know, I find it's tasty. And it's, you know, one of those things where, you know, it's been crafted to taste good. And, ah, oh man, oh, that's a fly. I thought, man, the wasp found me again. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's got that kind of buttery, almost like when I smelled it again, it had that popcorn type of thing. So that might be why I was getting that, what I thought was like a chemical or processed aroma. It was more like, you know, freshly popped popcorn, okay, that, that maybe came out of, maybe it wasn't freshly popped, but like you just got it from the movie theater, okay? Maybe with not tons of butter on it, but you get that that aroma of, of the corn. I can tell you I, I like this better than the Pinot Grigio. Um, just feel it has more flavor to it. It's got more oomph to it. It's got more body to it. The acid is about medium on the acidity level, so it's not not lots of acid. Um, I find the Pinot Grigio is more, more refreshing. <clears throat> um, so if it was really hot outside, it's probably in the, I don't know, it's probably like 75 right now. It's not that hot really. It's actually pretty cool um, this week. Uh, we had a little rain, the cold front came through. Um, it's the same week that uh, you know, Chicago saw, you know, saw flooding. Uh, it's also, you know, this is also the beginning of the week. Well, this is Sunday, but, you know, last week when this was recorded, or last Monday was when all the stuff happened in Boston. Uh, my heart, hearts out to all you guys. You know, thank you. Uh, thank you to the, um, to the law enforcement that, that caught the guys. Let's hope this, you know, it's resolved and they figure out what's going on. But anyway, um, and, you know, everybody who living there, you know, we have to go through that. But, um, uh, how did I get off track? Oh, saying that it was cool out here in the weather. But um, this one has more flavor for me. I, I, I enjoy it more. Um, I feel like you're, you're, you're getting more flavors out of it. Whereas the Pinot Grigio, I really think is, it, it, it feels like really hot. Like I said, it was 90 degrees and you wanted something that was refreshing. You go for that. The acidity is a little high. After the first couple sips, it, it calms down. Um, so, you know, it might not be as refreshing. You might feel a little thirstier. After this one, I don't feel as thirsty, but um, again, for, for $3, they're, they're, they're not bad. They're, they're pretty decent. All right. So, I forgot. That I had this little snack table I was supposed to bring, and I forgot it to make life easier. All right, black box. I've had black box a few times. Okay, and I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't. I, I actually kind of like the stuff in general. I mean, this was eighteen dollars and forty-seven cents at Walmart. Also, um, this is their 2011 California Riesling. Now, I got the Riesling for a couple. One, I got white wine because again, the beach lends itself to white wine. It's hot. Um, red wines tend to be a little too heavy, even the Pinot Noir. So I wanted to go with something that was refreshing and light. Um, Riesling is that too. I also bought the Riesling because somebody, oh, get the, I'll have pictures, hopefully, if I remember to take pictures of, the, of this stuff. Um, I also had somebody, I honestly can't remember who it was, but they said they had this Riesling, this particular Riesling, and they really liked it. So we're gonna check it out now. Man, I got the seagulls right behind the camera, too. Thank goodness I have a little thing here. What you guys want? I got nothing here for you. All right. 
Now, what I love about Black Box is that, okay, I just literally opened it, right? Because I pulled that little silver thing off. But because it has a perfect seal when you, when you don't, um, when, when you, after you pour the wine, this wine will last, you know, two, three weeks. Now, the Tetra Packs probably won't last more than what a normal bottle of wine would last if you opened it. Um, it might last a little bit longer, like a few days. Especially with the white wines, you can put them in the refrigerator anyway. So that's, that's a nice little trick if, you, if I haven't talked about that recently. Um, you open a bottle of wine, any wine, red, white, doesn't matter. And uh, say you don't have those little vacuum vent things, you don't have like sophisticated argon gas, whatchamacallits, throw it in the refrigerator. Put the cork back in it as, much, as far as you can put it in the refrigerator, okay? It cools it down, it slows down the mo air molecules that are already in the bottle and any air that's gonna enter it. Oh, come on. <laughs> anyway, um, it'll slow down the oxidation, oxid oxi it won't oxidize so fast. Um, and it doesn't matter with red or white, doesn't matter, and honestly, you put, it, you put a red wine in the refrigerator, it's not gonna hurt it, especially if you're gonna drink it again soon. Just take it out an hour probably you know before you're going to drink it to let it warm up enough um hell i'd even pour it in a glass let that glass warm up because the glass will warm up faster than the bottle but um anyway you can do that and that'll help slow down the uh, uh oxidation of the uh, wine anyway so i'm pretty sure these the the Vend vendange uh wines will probably when the tetra packs will probably uh, last a decent amount of time, especially if you leave them in the refrigerator. I'm not saying they'll last three weeks, but they might last a week, uh, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, who knows? All right, so Riesling. Um, <clears throat> so 2011 Riesling, Black Box. They're also out of California, oh, the company is. Um, I, I've, I've had other Black Box wines before. Can I, I feel that the quality for what you're paying, you know, it's about $20, and this is the equivalent of four bottles of wine. I believe so. Four bottles, so equivalent to four bottles. So it was like five dollar bottle wine. Okay, so the the quality that you're getting for the amount of money you're spending, I think, is is right on. I think it's spot on. Um, you're, again, you're not you're not this is this is not going to drink like fifteen or twenty dollar bottles of wine, but it's still going to drink pretty well. And the reason it's so cheap, not just because the grapes are not good quality, is that this packaging cost less money to make than it does a bottle. So that's where they're saving money and you're getting it in bulk. So it, it, it's, it helps with a lot of things. You know, it helps, I mean, this, this, this format is easier for shipping um, as far as they can put more stuff together. Um, so there's a lot of cost value in there. Same thing with the Tetra Packs. A lot of cost, um, is, not issues, but cost controls involved. That's why they can sell these things for you know a couple dollars less per bottle than maybe if it was in glass. All right, so Riesling, let's check it out. Well, I wouldn't say as usual with white wines I'm struggling, but there isn't a whole lot going on in the nose. I guess I get more of a melon pear maybe not as much citrus yeah I get kind of a more of a pear uh, aroma on the nose oh yeah what did the Chardonnay say I forgot did I get all the stuff they said hints of apple pear and oak well like I said it was, it was smooth no I didn't did I say it was smooth? well I did say it was kind of buttery yeah that was the oak Well, it's, I don't know if it's got residual sugar in it, but it definitely has, definitely has a sweetness to it, which, you know, is, is kind of, yeah, honey. Absolutely, I get the honey. Um, I didn't get it on the nose as much. I got more of a pear, but really I get a honey aspect. They talk about citrus. I get a little citrus out of it. Um, I still get that pear but I do get this honey more than anything else on, on the palate. Um, it, it's, 
Again, I don't know if there's any any actual residual sugar or, or significant residual sugar or RS, as you'll hear the wine professionals say. Um, but it's it's definitely sweet. It's sweeter than the other two wines, um, so there's probably a little bit higher sugar level in it. Um, it's refreshing. Uh, would I peg this as a Riesling? I don't know. Me, if I had to in a blind, I probably would lean towards a Riesling because of the sweetness. Um, it's not a dry Riesling by any means. Well, I guess technically it probably is dry or, or semi-dry on, on the sweetness scale. Yeah, still really pear, not, not really the honey on the nose. Yeah, I get kind of apple on it too. Apple and honey, maybe some pear still, but a little bit of um, something else. I don't actually, maybe it is a tangerine. I think they did say tangerine on it. I don't know. Yeah, they did. No lemon. They say lemon. I don't get any lemon. A honey sweetness. So I'm going to guess there might be actually some residual sugar on this. It doesn't really say, which is fine. It doesn't have to. <clears throat> but, you know, the geek in me would like to know some of those, I guess as I get sand all over it. Anyway, um, it's not bad. Talking $20, so $18.47 at Walmart, so $20 for a box. This is definitely something that, you know, whether it's the beach or you're having a party outside, um, so you want to supply some wine for a group of people, it's four bottles worth of wine, so you can really have, you know, you can really supply a lot of people with one of these wines. Uh, that's really, to me, what the biggest reason to do this is. Uh, it's not just for just for some one person. It's really meant for, you know, having a lot of people over. You can do that. So, it's um, it's tasty enough. So, yeah. All in all, the three wines are not bad. Uh, they're pretty good. Hello, seagulls. How you doing over there? Uh, getting the strange looks from people like, what's this guy doing? But I'm used to that. Anyway, um, uh, that's going to do it for the three wines. Uh, I'm going to pack up here. I'm going to head back to the condo. Um, I got the San Antonio Spurs playing this afternoon against the Los Angeles Lakers for game one of the, of the first round of playoffs. Um, I got to watch the Tottenham Hotspur this morning. Went to McDonald's because that's the only place to get a reliable internet connection. So I'm sitting there watching soccer. And, you know, uh, on the way there, I was able to listen to the game on, in the car. Uh, on satellite radio in Manchester City, jerks, um, score in like the first like eight minutes of the game. So I'm pissed off at that. And then I get in, I set everything up. I'm actually able to connect and watch the game. And second half, Tottenham gets like three goals inside of six minutes. And the first goal, I kind of, I mean, I have headphones on and all that. And I got these awesome Ultimate Ears headphones. I love them. Uh, they block out the sound. You, they got great audio to them. And I'm like, I, I clap. And I'm like, oh, there's other people here. And I was trying to be quiet. And then the second time, I'm like, you know, I'm not yelling. The third time, I was like, I wanted to, like, jump up and down. Uh, so we won 3-1. So Spurs won today in the morning. So they need to win the act in the afternoon. Um, I did a little, little tweet action to Steve Nash that, no offense, but the San Antonio Spurs have to win now because Steve Nash uh, is from Canada and um, huge soccer fan. He's a Tottenham Hotspur fan. So, you know, his stock level went up quite a few points when I found that out a few years ago. Um, but he's still, on a, he's still on a rival team, so I have to hate him, right? I can respect him. I just don't have to like him, right? Anyway, um, so I got that. Uh, do some more. Today's not going to be too much of a study day. I might do a little bit later on tonight. And then I head back to San Antonio tomorrow, which is Monday. And uh, so this is going to get posted the following Monday. So all this happened like a week ago. So uh, anyway, I just want to thank everybody for stopping by. Uh, as always, click the links above, friend me up, and, you know, all, all the various social media things, you know, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google Plus, and, and friend me up on the wine side. I, 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 I try to avoid connecting my, my personal Google stuff together, but I did, and now all of a sudden I have a Google Plus account, and uh, I, I won't 
add anybody, I'm not gonna add anyone in those circles. Just uh, add me on the wine side because that's the purpose of doing Google Plus because I'm not gonna do anything on the personal side with Google. Um, but friend me up on Twitter, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn. Uh, you wanna connect with me on LinkedIn, all that stuff. Um, remember I got the donate button. You gotta go to the website for all this, remember that. Hit the web, hit the donate button. Uh, send me a few ducats so I can buy some more box wine or whatever wine. Um, so I've got that. You can donate any level or there's also a $5 a month subscription so you can do that. Uh, leave comments below. Uh, tell me what's, you know, see, let me know how you, what you think about everything. Um, tell your friends and, you know, let people know. TiVo, Roku, um, you know, those, those are other outlets that you can watch me on. Maybe you already watch me on that. Uh, besides the website itself, you go to the website, um, you know, download the, download the podcast off of iTunes. You can stream it to your Apple TV or just airplay it from your phone. Um, so, I mean, I, I get everything. I haven't gotten the Roku box yet. I'm going to probably get that soon because I want to see how it looks on Roku. Um, and I also, to, to, to more thank yous, iFood.tv. They've been awesome. Uh, they promote me almost every week with, uh, with, with not just my latest, but they'll pick, they'll pick one of my earlier shows and promote those on their, on their homepage, tweet about it, and they let me know what's going to happen. Not, well, they let me know what's happened. Um, that's also where I get all the Roku views is off of their feed, which I thought was kind of funny because Blip TV, I send it to Roku also. So that's kind of interesting that the, the, the stats are from iFood.tv rather than Blip. Um, and then just real quick, Blip TV, if you guys ever watch this, come on. I'm sorry, you got this wine show that has 11 episodes that the person's done over the whole lifetime of, of, of that show and did like two episodes the end of last year. I think one was at the beginning of this year. Uh, hadn't done episodes in like 10 months, hasn't done anything since. And you feature that show over mine. I, I, you know, the only reason I stay on Blip TV is because their distribution model and there's, there's a revenue model. Otherwise, I would, I would totally just stay with YouTube. But because of, the, because of how, it, <clears throat> because of the, with their distribution, which used to be much better in the past, it's, it's gotten not as good. Um, I just don't want to go through the hassle of uploading to YouTube and using that feed for my iTunes uh, podcast now. I mean, I probably can. I just don't want to go through the hassle of changing the feed. Um, other than that, you mean Blip TV is, you know, I, it goes to Roku. The RSS feed from Blip TV is what um, what what um, TiVo uses. So again, I don't have to go through the hassle of redoing all that. So it's kind of why I stay with Blip. Otherwise, you know, since they don't since they don't really care, I would I would have just kicked them to the curb a long time ago because I've I've emailed them and all that. Anyway, I'm snuff of the soapbox. Um, thank you for stopping by. Click the links, leave comments, tell your friends, and we'll see everyone again next time.